Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm your host, Sarah Scully. You may have noticed some changes around here if you've been subscribing for a while. We did have a name change to reflect our broader mission of um, including more than just craft tours now. We're going to be offering um, some other exciting products and services um, coming out later this year. So um, keep your eye, watch this space, and we'll reveal more details um, over the coming months. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to share with you today's interview with Nancy and Walter of the Pot Liquor Kitchen. Um, these are a, a couple who are entrepreneurs, and they started their food business out of their home kitchen, and now their products are sold uh, nationwide in stores. So I think it's a fascinating um, tale, and I hope you'll enjoy our interview. I also have a giveaway for you um, to tie in with this, and I'll tell you more about that at the end of the interview. So stay tuned, and let's hear from Nancy and Walter. And okay. canning for me was like an addiction. And I started canning everything, and when I ran out of all the stuff, when it, nothing was seasonal, I started going mm -hmm. to my cabinets, which was wine, coffee, vinegar. It turns out you could turn it all into jelly. Mm -hmm. and Today, I'm here with my friend Nancy Warner of the Pot Liquor Kitchen. Welcome, Nancy. And Thank you. Thanks for having me uh, over to the Pot Liquor Headquarters. Thanks for coming up to sell. Yeah. Um, so, we're here in your kitchen, and we'll show a little bit more of that later on. Um, but I wanted to uh, start at the beginning with you. Um, I met you early on in the process, yeah. pretty early on. I think it was through the beer club. Um, oh, yeah, really, yeah. definitely early on. So um, how did you, at that point, you had already started to kind of develop the, the beer jelly idea, um, but how did you get started with, you know, this idea of making, not just uh, making jam and jellies at home, but, you know, to have it all that into your business? Yeah. So the really long story, which I think you might be interested in, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of people who are interested in your stuff would be, is that um, I'm an archaeologist by training and schooling, mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time in the woods and foraging, and I started being really interested in food systems mm. and studying it. So my foraging led me to canning and traditional food ways, and that's how I got interested in canning. And okay. canning for me was like an addiction. And I started canning everything. And when I ran out of all the stuff, when it, nothing was seasonal, I started going mm -hmm. to my cabinets, which was wine, coffee, vinegar. It turns out you could turn it all into jelly. Mm -hmm. And I knew that you could make wine jelly as a very traditional kind of old food. Mm -hmm. But I liked the taste of beer. And beer was just this new huge thing in my world that I was into. Mm -hmm. So I just thought about making beer jelly. And I want to reference the homebrew club. Ronnie had an amazing vanilla porter that year mm -hmm. that I remember taking to market. But that that's the kind of roundabout way that I started with beer jelly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. um, and since then, you've grown up into you know quite quite a business. Yeah. Um, uh, how many uh, jars of jelly do you make a year? We do at least a thousand jars a week. Sometimes uh -huh. it's three thousand. So you could safely say we do fifty-two, two hundred jars, jars of jelly. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of jelly. But. Um, and along that journey, you've developed a, a really pretty wide palette of flavors. Yeah. Um, you know, more and more beer jellies, of course, you know, light beers, mm -hmm. apricot beers, all kinds of things. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about your, um, your catalog. So the beer jelly is something that's sort of formulaic. And mm -hmm. once I nailed that beer jelly formula, I could make any flavor into mm -hmm. beer jelly. And that's a lot of fun because beer is so different. So mm -hmm. every beer jelly tastes as different as the beer. And that right. catalog just balloon because of it. And I have a hard time not just keeping making more flavors. Right. Uh, the Especially here in Vermont because we have so many good, yeah. you know, small batch brewers and yeah. and There's always know, great. people who are doing all kinds of different things. Yeah. Which can be a bit of a challenge in my business as we've grown because I really love some of the small batch things and that's how I started with it. But mm -hmm. customers tend to want a lot of stability in their mm -hmm. product, mm -hmm. uh, such as people want strawberry jam year round. Right. So I, it was really hard for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's me too. Yeah. Um, but I had a, I have a hard time staying the course uh -huh. with some flavors. Yeah. I've, I've really had to focus and not keep picking up new flavors over right. the past couple of years. I've, I've narrowed it down to about three dozen. Right. <laughs> Seven thousand flavors of beer jelly. Yeah, exactly. Could, I, could do it. I could see that. Um, and how much, um, I, I imagine especially in the early days when you're kind of dialing in that, that core recipe, that experimentation was a really big part of that oh, process. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. How many iterations would you say you went through before you kind of dialed in? 
Actually, the beer jelly was much faster than I expected. I mm-hmm. have other jams that I work on for years, literally, mm-hmm. before I get mm-hmm. something that I'm like, that was what I was trying to achieve. Right. Um, so the beer jelly probably only went through three or four initial mm-hmm. iterations before that was like, that's my signature product. Mm-hmm. And now, over the number of years I've been in business and we've scaled it, I realized some things like, I used to spend hours, and every friend who came over would like pour beer back and forth into something and try to make it flat for me because mm-hmm. we thought having flat beer was so important in the beginning. Right. <laughs> it turns out it's not. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter yeah. at all. So. <laughs> well, that's good for efficiency. If you're making, for efficiency, yeah, that my much friends were glad to hear that. Stuff. Yeah, you don't really have time to be sitting there doing this, or, 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 or stirring whiskey, whatever. Yeah. And um, and what else? Uh, obviously, the ingredients inspire you, but what else kind of inspires you to either create a new flavor or you know. Start start the research process down a new recipe? Sometimes, uh, most of the time, it's because I want something. Mm -hmm. Usually the flavors are all driven by me. In fact, all but like two of the flavors are Mm -hmm. driven by me. Mm -hmm. Um, So if I want something new, if I've got a specific use for it, sometimes, especially in the beginning, it was it was absolutely by using everything around me to its minuscule amount. Mm -hmm. Like, I have leftover this, this, this. What can I make with it? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's sort of changed over the years. Yeah. Very cool. Sounds like an Iron Chef kind of a challenge, or like one of those, you know, cooking shows. It's like, yeah. okay, Doesn't you have matter. these three ingredients, and what can you make? One hour, what can you make? <laughs> <laughs> I would win. Yeah, got it. that's great. That's great. Um, and so then you grew from kind of you know farmers markets and selling one to one to you know directly to your customers to you know a few small stores. I know our local co-op still still carries your beer okay. jelly, which is great for me. Um, and then you know it's just gotten bigger and bigger. Um, I'm always fascinated as how people kind of make those decisions, you know, mm-hmm. like what what spurs them and then how do you know what the next thing is going to be? Mm-hmm. Can you can you talk us through that a little bit? Because you've grown from, you know, your kitchen, then you had a smaller space and now we're in this larger space yeah. and, and selling to, you know, big chain stores now. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and in some ways that sounds like everybody's in all be all, but it shouldn't be for everybody. Right. I think growth, business growth, and how you go is very, very personal and who you are. Mm -hmm. I, for better or worse, never thought about staying super small. There was always something in my mind that knew it was going to get larger. And that's probably a lot to do with my personality. That's Mm kind of how I do things. Um, And I ran into uh, Jackie from Nutty Steph's. Mm-hmm. who gave me some great advice about that. And she's like, you sort of need to decide early on. Are you going to stay with these customers and you're going to build your most loyals and do the hand-to-hand? Or are right. you going to grow past it? And, mm-hmm. you know, she when it has to be a hard decision. You can't do both. Right. And it's true. I, you know, I can try and I love to do the really personal farmer's markets. Uh-huh. But it's hard to sometimes justify. It's, it's really hard to schedule right. as a larger business. It's, right. it's easier to do as a small business. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, and especially with uh, the family. And you might hear the family in the background. Uh, Walter and the kids are here, too, and we'll bring them on camera. My partner in everything is kid wrangling right now. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I think that's a good point. Um, you know, and especially with the family and wanting to have that family time, probably doing big batches here, selling more jam wholesale, and then being able to spend more family time rather than selling yeah. one jar at a time, letting the stores take over there. Um, yeah. That really is huge. As a as a family and as somebody who really needs a lot of time for themselves, mm-hmm. having the flexibility of having a larger business means I can kind of step away. I don't always have to be the person to stir that pot. Mm-hmm. I do always need to be the person checking the quality and things like that, so I'm not removed from it by any means, but right. um, I get a little bit of break to do some other things. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Yeah, because you have a couple of employees now. Yeah, we, that stage. we have a few. Yeah. It fluctuates through the years. So, um, as low as three, as high as six, depending uh-huh. on how busy we are. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you and your husband, um, Walter's been very involved in the jelly business. Was it that way yeah. from the start? Um, or has he come on board more <laughs> as the growth has happened? Both. It was okay. that way from the start. Um he was more involved than he wanted to be. Uh. <laughs> I, I asked for his help, and he very generously gave me a ton of help when uh, we started. And then we ballooned so fast mm-hmm. that he became just entwined, really. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we kind of had some overnight growth, very literally overnight growth, where we were doing this kind of small thing and going to our co-ops and farmer's markets, and a catalog picked us up, and it mm. did better than either the catalog or us. Or Mm -hmm. that we can imagine. Mm -hmm. And it went, like, on a Black Friday. They sold out on their website. And we went from, like, maybe 10, 5 workers on our website 
like hundreds wow. overnight. Like wow. I printed out a ream of paper and I was like, how are we, <laughs> how, how are we gonna do this? Yeah. yeah. So great. it was it was pretty amazing. It was pretty phenomenal growth there. For, yeah. So he didn't have a choice. Right. Short story long, he didn't have a choice. He jumped <laughs> in to help with everything and here we are. Right, married to the business. Married right? to the business. Yeah. Yeah. But that's great though, because um, you know, I see Walter. There's a another craft show that I do. I help a friend. I always see him at the, the Vermont um, handcrafter show and and that. So it's nice to see both of you involved. That's a really um, important show for me. I really yeah. like that organization. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so now you've gotten to the point where you know you have employees, you're doing thousands of jars of jelly a year, um, you've hit a couple of bigger um, kind of regional supermarkets, mm -hmm. mainline grocery stores. Okay. Um, so I want to ask you what's next? <laughs> what's next? Well, I after the business really started to become successful mm -hmm. and we started to feel more stable in it. We took some time to have a family, which was sort of unexpected for us, but life takes some twists. Right. Um, so we decided to have a family, and now I'm sort of refocusing and looking back to where the business started. Mm -hmm. I really want to go back to some of those original flavors. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of hone in. I don't, I don't really have any grand plans to take over the world and jam. I really just kind of want right. to make make the foundation strong. Yeah. 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 So I think that's really good. It seems like, um, you need that. It's, you know, all business and everything is kind of cyclical. So you need yeah. to like, it's a grounding growth, period and then kind of reevaluate <laughs> and then maybe mm -hmm. grow in a different direction or set exactly. a new goal Yeah, and then reevaluate again and kind of, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think this year is going to be like, like I said, a little bit of a grounding year, you mm -hmm. know, evaluate some things. I've got some shifts in packaging that I'm going to do to Make some of business a little bit more streamlined for some easier on my employees. We're like, we hand label everything and it's amazing and I love wow. it, but they hate me for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, well, the other thing uh, that I want to point out, and I'll link to this in the show notes for this episode, is that um, Nancy has some great recipes. So if, for those of you who are sitting at home, maybe you've never heard of beer jelly, um, and you're scratching your head going, well, what exactly would I do with that? Trust me. She's got you. She's got you. Um, and I say from awesome... roast to toast, we've got you covered. Yeah, exactly. I love your tagline. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, but she's got, you know, savory dishes, desserts, all kinds of things. So I will link that up in the, in the show notes, but um, if you had you know one one recipe that you just wanted to mention um is there's one in particular you want to share yeah Get people excited the about? one that i always tell people is beer jelly chicken wings it's mm. so easy mm -hmm. and so good mm -hmm. and you can be super lazy and just use a fork and smash on the chicken wings and stick them under the broiler and you end up with these crispy, sticky, crunchy wings, and mm. it's, it's just wings and jelly. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So. Actually, a friend of mine uses um he uses barbecue sauce and jelly anyway as like his deep, kind of default yeah. glaze on anything. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes total sense to me that it's like a really good meat glaze. Meat glaze. Yeah. I use my jams and jellies as starters for uh -huh. sauces, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. yeah, and you got that natural thickening going on. Exactly. So it's yeah. very cool. Yeah. So check that out. I was looking at uh, Nancy's. Um, Peanut butter cups. It's like peanut butter and jelly. So I'm gonna try those. Awesome. Those Another really easy, things. like three ingredients. Right. Coconut oil hits key there. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Excellent. Well, I think we're gonna get um, we're gonna invite Walter on camera. I've got a couple of questions for him. So we'll be back in just a minute. Thank you for tuning in. Um, so we're back, and I've got the other half of uh, Pot Liquor Kitchen here with me, Walter. Uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, absolutely. Happy <laughs> to be a, here. Did a kid swap, and uh, and yeah, I get to chat with you for a couple of minutes. Um, so I just want to get your perspective on the business, too, and especially um, since it, it's a family biz, and you guys kind of maybe trade off roles, um, you know, plus you have two small children to take care of. So how does how does that all work? Do you guys have a system down pat at this it's, point? It's uh, organized chaos. Yeah. Really. yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, when you have two kids and you're running a business and you have employees to, you know, keep, you know, keep in mind and things mm -hmm. like that and vendors and customers' concerns, um, you really kind of have to, like, go with it. Mm -hmm. um, kind of roll with the punches. and uh, Yeah. 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 And do you guys, um, I assume you like maybe trade off childcare, like you have certain days or certain hours. Yeah. So sometimes, um, you know, usually, uh, Emma goes to daycare, mm -hmm. um, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays and Fridays, and we have Charlie with us all the time. She's mm -hmm. not in daycare. So, um, Wednesdays are particularly hard for us because we have both kids. So mm -hmm. Wednesdays are the day mm -hmm. when somebody stays home. And it's yeah. either myself and uh -huh. Nancy stays home, or um, and I come to work, or yep. it's the other way around. Yeah, 
that makes sense. We talked with um, Becca and Nathan uh, Webb of Two Potters, okay. and they have kind of a, a chic setup where they have their um, pottery as at their homestead. So it's like one of them goes and gets like quiet pottery time, mm -hmm. and the other one stays in the right, late sort right. of trade off. So it seems like, you know, with any kind of family business, you have to have that. Yeah, take. I mean, we're fortunate enough to have the daycare right next door. So, That's nice. You know, yeah. we can actually kind of sit here and work, and then look out the window. Uh huh. And, uh, Watch the kids play in the playground. Oh, that's outside. nice. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I feel still connected. Um, and I know you guys trade off um, craft shows as well, uh -huh. like working different days and stuff. Um, um, and the other thing I asked Nancy, and I'll put you on the spot too, is um, maybe your favorite ways to use your products. Do you have uh -huh. one favorite recipe? Yeah. So like um, I like the fruit jams. Uh huh. You know, so. Um, Especially the blueberry sage is my favorite. Mm. And I will use the blueberry sage on anything from ice cream to pancakes to waffles. Mm -hmm. uh, we can kind of shake it into a cocktail. Um, it's got so many different uses. Yeah. Nice. So that blueberry sage jam is uh -huh. um, right up there. Yeah. Um, PB and J's, however, are strawberry. So yeah. Chipotle, I, I, I am with you there. Yep. Yeah, heavy strawberry fan. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Walter. Sure, and thank pleasure. you all for joining us. Um, tune in next time for more Vermont craft goodness. Cheers. Thanks for being with us. So long. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. And I hope you enjoyed that interview with Nancy and Walter. I sure learned a lot about how their business has grown over the years. And to celebrate that, um, Nancy and Walter have kindly donated prizes for you all. Um, so we are going to be giving away some of their delicious Vermont made jam. Um, we're going to have two winners and you'll be able to pick from a couple of different flavors um, that they've donated. So um, the way to enter the uh, giveaway is you're going to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, you can hit the little bell icon at the top of your screen um, to do that. And then you're also going to leave a comment on this video um, down below and tell us what is your jam, okay? I want to know uh, what it is that you like to do for your creative hobby or your creative outlet. So maybe you write poetry. Uh, maybe you uh, are a singer-songwriter. Maybe you like to paint. Maybe... You like to spin fiber, brew beer, play around in the kitchen, um, could be anything. Make jewelry, whatever it is that you like to do that's your creative outlet. Um, share, share that with us in the comments. We'd love to know more about our audience and uh, what makes you guys tick. We'll pick two winners on Friday and uh, we'll send out your choice of jam. Thanks again for watching and tune in uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll have another video for you. Cheers.